Well, you look nice. Where you been? <laughs> church. See, one of us goes to church for Easter. That's right. So what was it like? Crowded. Really? Yep. Tell me about your hat. I have my Easter bonnet that my husband loves. You can look at the camera. And you know, to tell me. out of probably 2,000 people, I was the only one with a hat, which really surprised me. Especially on Easter. Really? How come? I just thought there'd be a, a few people, a few women with them on, but there wasn't a one. Not any women with hats on, huh? Not a one. What kind of church is it like? Uh, How would you describe it? Contemporary? Young people? It's a mix. It's a contemporary church. It's a mix. It has... People mega in their twenties to not quite a mega church, I'd say medium. They have a traditional service in the morning, and then they have three contemporary services because they're so big. And how do you find this church? A uh, one of my coworkers. He sings in the praise band. And he invited me one Sunday, and I went, and I liked it, and I've been going ever since. Cool. You look very nice, by the way. This is my wife, in case you didn't know. What is your name again? What's my name? Yeah. As my mother would say, put in tame. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's Lori. This is my wife, Lori, in case you didn't know, and I'm Michael. Who's Michael very Lori. camera shy, so she I hates. Am, like, Sweating bullets sitting in front of the camera. She doesn't like to do ministry work. She doesn't like to witness. She doesn't like to talk. She doesn't like to go to Bible studies. As a matter of fact, everything that she's the opposite of what I am. I'd love to go to Bible studies. I love to do all that stuff. She's like the opposite extreme. She would rather eat meat and potatoes and go to work. <laughs> I have a fear of being in front of people. It's panic city for me. That's okay. You're not in front of anybody. That is not a person over there. That is a camera. Trust me. I can see that it's a camera. It is not a person. It is so intimidating. It is a really small little ball with a red light flashing. That's it. <laughs> it can't be too serious. How serious <laughs> can it be? But you look lovely. I mean, I just knew I had to get this shot, you know, a picture, because basically I started a video series, video, called Wise Tales, and we have recorded none of them. Because it's supposed to be about her talking about me, about what you don't know about me. You know, all the tales that wives tell about their husbands, or like in ministry, they don't tell because, after all, we want to keep our people in front of the camera as images rather than reality. The only things I look beautiful today because of the hat. I dress up every day for work, and it's got to be the hat. Now, let's be honest for a second, okay? Because we have, first of all, it's Easter. I know it's where you're going. The you're going. And Don't I tell, do I tell you every you? morning you're gorgeous when you go to work? What can I? No, 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 no. Let's forget the work. Let's talk about when you go to bed. Oh, you come in and you kiss me goodnight and you tell me I'm beautiful. Right. Now, and see? I say, go away. I want to read my book. Exactly. <laughs> I'm telling her she's beautiful and what does she do? She wants to read her book. Typical marriage, you know, that is two opposite extremes. Me telling her how wonderful she is, how beautiful and everything, because she's relaxed, she's laid out on bed. You know, guys, when you lay you down, every goes away. <laughs> you can imagine that, guys, you know, wife's laid down on bed, you know, and you're thinking something, you know. Well, no, I wasn't. But the point is, is that when she relaxes, you know, she just, all of a sudden, is just like peaceful, calm, quiet. Because where we live is pretty quiet. So then she's all kind of like, ah. And she's reading her book, and I come in to kiss her goodnight, and she's like, <laughs> Snoring. <laughs> so I have to wake her up and say, Good night, honey. And then she goes back to sleep. We're a typical older couple. You know how that is. Read and the book falls asleep on your chest. Uh, you can snore and read with it holding it. So can you. <laughs> That's true. I snore all the time, but I don't hold the book open. <laughs> no, you read one page and put it down. You're put it down and go to sleep. sleep. Sleeping, reading, sleeping, reading, sleeping, reading. So what would you like to tell, first of all, everybody out there, the thousands and millions of people, now that you've panicked over camera, that are watching about Easter, or that you'd like to wish them for Easter? First of all, are you safe? We should ask I am that. Safe. You are safe, really? What are you safe from? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, 
not from me. That's obvious. <laughs> you got to put up with me. But no, how long have you been a Christian? Born again Christian. Seven years? About seven years. I guess. You tell me. <laughs> About seven years. Cool. I can't believe we've been together that long. So how long? Okay, there we go. How long have we been married? It would be six. How long have we been together? Seven. Where did we meet? Alaska. No, on the internet. Right. Yeah. And then what did I do? Fly you up to Alaska, right? We went to Alaska. Cool. Then you got saved? I so, got saved. Right on. How do you like... What, what does being saved mean to you? How would you describe what saved no, is? No, these are the kind of questions that make me start sweating. I know. <laughs> what does it mean to you? I guess for... Give you a hint. Here's my little card. What's it say up there? Like sharing Jesus. It's about Jesus. Hint, hint. J E S U S. There, we give it. Okay. I guess one of the most important things now is if seven years, if someone said to me, "What has Jesus done for you?" I go, "Huh." What do you mean, huh? And now I could say, "He died for me." Oh, you mean seven years ago you would have said that? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, is he personal? Is he real? Or is he just kind of like this thing oh, in your imagination? Oh, he's definitely real. He does freaky things to me all the time. Really? Freaky things like what? Just, I don't know. I'll read a devotion in the morning, and it'll come true during the course of the day. So you'd say, like, God is talking to you through the devotion? Yeah, and sometimes he talks to me through you. Through me? Someone like me? You mean he doesn't use a donkey? He uses me? <laughs> you will tell me something, or I call it preaching to me. And me preach? Then all of a sudden that day or the next day I'll come home and I'll go, Dang it, Michael! See what happened to me because of what you said? What he says to me comes true in a very short period of time. Cool. So it's like... God speaks through him. Because he's trying to teach you something, not because I have anything special about oh, me. Yeah, I'm so stubborn, though. I'm so stubborn. So, would you say that you're a completely submissive wife to everything that I say to do? Oh, heck no. <laughs> <laughs> would you say that we fight at times? All the time. So, what can I, how do I fight? What do you think of me as a fighter when I'm fighting and arguing with you? I think you're unfair. Because you won't just fight, because you always bring the Bible into it, what the Bible says. And I don't think that's fair, because I don't know as much about the Bible as you do, and I just want to have a good old knockdown, drag out fight. And you'd like to go stomp off, you know, and have some quiet time to figure it out, right? Yep. I you want you to just get out of my space and leave me alone. And you know I honestly always do that for you, don't yeah, I? Well, you don't. You get in my face. <laughs> and make the fight worse. But does it get resolved? Not for a week later. Because I'm not stuck <laughs> so how, with how carry long, it for days. So how long does it take me to forget about it? Two seconds. How long does it take you to forget about it? Two, three days. There we go. So do you think we're a match? Heck no. You don't think we're a perfect fit? Mm -mm. Why? Because we're opposites. So you don't think opposites are a perfect fit? They say opposites attract. True. But would you say that my strengths fit your weaknesses and your weaknesses fit my strengths? At times. And that I could help you when you fall down and you help me when I fall down? <laughs> I think it's a little more one-sided. Really? Huh. You think God maybe helps both of us? Do you think maybe like Jesus is in the midst of us? You know, like maybe he's got the other chair here. Yep. Where is his chair? He doesn't need us. Because he's in our heart, right? So, knowing that you're saved and you know Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do every morning? I As a Christian. Get up and read my Bible and read my devotionals while I'm having my coffee. Cigarette. My cigarette, yes. He's a you, man. you smoke? Shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to get her to smoke one of these times on camera so I can t teach people. It's okay. Nope, I won't. I don't feel right. So anyways, now, 
being a Christian, okay, so we've already established that you know Jesus, you're born again, right? You read your Bible, you know, you go to church, you do all those things, you know. <laughs> what do you think about me? <laughs> I'm probably the least one likely to get up in the morning to read his Bible. Not. Get up in the morning to, you know, like, uh, let's see, what else? Go to church? Uh-uh. You know? I have never seen anybody so in love with the Lord. And what did I tell you the other day in the middle of our fight? You're obsessed. <laughs> you said, honey, you ain't seen obsessed yet. <laughs> Probably true. <coughs> so would you say that, okay, just me, you're living with me, you know, am I different? Well, that's a good question. Am I different in real life as I am on the videos? Oh. You what? Yep. How so? You're human too. So, besides being human, the human aspect, I think I show the human aspect. She doesn't watch all the videos. I show some of the human aspects on the videos, but what would you say, am I less about Jesus on in real life than I am on the videos? No. So I'm just as obsessive like you, the word you used in real life as I am in video life. Mm -hmm. Even though on videos they don't get a chance to see me like, you know, waking up in the morning. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. What would you describe me as a morning person? I'll be so dang happy and sickening. How would you describe yourself as a morning person? I can't swear. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a good thing that you read your Bible and pray in the morning and do all these things. Yep, I just need to be left alone. Yep. And what do I do? <laughs> You leave me alone. Where do I go? <laughs> to the computer. To the computer. <laughs> exactly. I do my own stuff with the Lord, you know, ministry. So, being that it's Easter and we were sharing some intimate thoughts about who we are, you know, as people and the fact that we're both saved and that we're both married, you know, to each other <laughs> and that we haven't been married that long and that we do have fights, you know, and there's really those times where we're human and we, we have flesh and blood just like everyone else out there and like you. And Jesus helps us, you know, to get through it by reading devotionals and reading our Bible and studying. What would you like to tell people about Easter? Anything special before, before we say something about, you know, blessing them for, you know, watching this on Easter or? Well, I just hope and I pray that um, people remember the true meaning of Easter and Christ's resurrection. It's not all about bunnies. The Easter bunny and Cadbury the eggs. eggs and the Easter baskets. Chocolate. And and that's why I went to church today, so that I could have my time to remember Jesus and praise Him and sing praises to Him. And, um, he did a video this morning about um, the way he feels peace. And, oh, you mean me? Yeah. And my way I feel peace is when I go to church. There may be lots of people around me. There may be... It's loud music because it's contemporary, but I feel such a peace there, and I feel clo closer, I guess. When we're driving along, when I go to church, when you go to church, when we're driving along, you know, listening to Christian music, do I sing? Uh -huh. Do I sing anyways? <laughs> yeah. Do I sing praise songs anyways? Yeah. I just want to mention, you know, you know, it's not like I'm some kind of, you know, like not going to church for some particular reason. Why do you think I don't go to church? Been there, done that, don't need it. You think I tell you that I don't need it, or you think that's something that you came up with? Not both. Because I believe, you know, strongly that everyone should go to church, and I participate in church. Do you remember when we lived in a church? Mm -hmm. We lived in the back of the church and helped the pastor to get an old historic church opened, and getting the congregation started and uh, we would set up the church and take down the church and bring coffee and donuts and greet people and how many churches we had two churches at the same time the so same, the same pastor had two churches so we lived in the back of one church mm -hmm. and we would set up the old historical church and then we would run over and set up the, the young church, the young church, or the church that was in the groves. Yeah. So you did a lot of missionary work like that, but mm -hmm. you wouldn't describe it that way, would you? You didn't think of it that way. No, I just think of it. It's what you do. Serving the Lord, I don't put a word to it. 
a lot of reasons why I don't go with my wife to churches. We go check out, and haven't we done this together regularly? I mean, I'll take her to a Calvary Chapel or a church. And what happens every time I go to a church? The pastor's never there. <laughs> and what do I tell you is the reason? I don't remember. Whenever I'm looking for a church to be a part of with my wife, I always say a prayer and say, Lord, you know, if this is where you want me to be instead of, like, you know, doing ministry work or doing the work of the ministry and being a minister on the internet, then I always say, Lord, you know, if I'll check out this church, you know, because I always check out, like, all the Calvaries and I check out other churches like Foursquare and some other ones and just a variety of them. I like to go at different times to different places for fun because I enjoy it. I've been to denominations and non-denominations and Catholics and Protestants and Lutherans and everybody and Jewish and synagogues and, you know, all these things in my life. So, having said that, yes, I've committed myself at different times, and every time I go to a church, when I get committed to one, they make me a missionary at large and send me out. <laughs> I think I've been a missionary at large at four churches now. Three of them, two of them Calvaries, and two of them non denoms But um, anyways, having said that, I'll always pray, Lord, you know, we're moved into a new city. I want to get involved in a church with my wife and get her involved. You know, Together, we're going to go into some study. And, Lord, let's do this. And so I say, okay, honey, you know, let's go check out this church this Sunday. You know, let's go see what it's like. You know, we'll see if we like it. And so we go, and the pastor's not there. And I go, check off one, Lord. <laughs> and when we do go, and if the pastor should happen to be there, usually what happens is I like the church, and he doesn't like the church. So we're totally opposite in what our needs are for the different churches we go to. True. Would you say that at times, you know, this is a true statement that you have your own walk with Jesus and I have my own walk with Jesus? Oh, 100%. And would you agree with this statement that we also have a walk together with Jesus? I don't know. Do we? Good question. <laughs> do we? <laughs> Are we doing this together? <laughs> We're doing this video together. Do I get are involved we, in your ministry online? No. Exactly. Now, are we involved together in the ministry, though? You, you say doing, so. I know. With you doing your part and me doing my part. In other words, do you in some ways financially support the ministry well, in some yeah, ways? Uh, we make it out of our budget and we do things that we pay minimal amount of money, but still it's a, it's a portion that we say it's our ministry, so it's something we do together. Even though you don't do the technical work or the no. video work, you still participate in other ways. Yeah, I go to work so you can stay home and do the ministry. Exactly, because I have worked in the past, correct? Let's clarify this, because yeah. men have insecurities. <laughs> now, who is making more money, just out of curiosity? <laughs> it depends on the job at the time. Yeah, which job? Did I have oh, a job? Oh, get off it. How much money was I making? I'm not going to tell. <laughs> okay, good. But it was so, pretty good. The point being is that when I was working, I was able to produce and financially support us in ways that we were comfortable with, and we spent the money. And when I wasn't working, we I do the ministry, so it's either one or the other. It's never been both, it seems like. Okay, so now, what would you like to tell people to them based upon it being Easter and like it blessing them as it's an Easter day and you want to... God bless them and be at peace and go and get out of our way because we're going to go eat. <laughs> By the way, where are we going That's this one thing he talks about all the time. Food, food, food. But why? Why? How much do I eat? Depends on the day. How many calories can I eat? Ten times probably the normal human being. Would you say 6,000 calories per day? I don't know. I, I never count calories, so yes. I don't know what That's the average I, person should have. But I'm supposed to eat at 6,000. Do I gain weight? Well, you helped me gain weight, finally. Yeah. Meat and potatoes. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> That's what you eat. I don't eat. I eat everything. I eat everything I get my hands on. Anyways, the point being is that I have Crohn's disease. I'm a disabled person. So being disabled, I have the capability of consuming calories without gaining weight. And so it's hard for me to gain weight. So we have to supplement it with insure and all kinds of calorie intake so I can maintain my weight. If I work, then I have to eat even more food. You know, I was to just going to say that if he goes to work, then he like, can drop 10 pounds in one day, and then his appetite increases, and then he eats us out of the house. <laughs> True. And I can consume turkeys, <laughs> chickens, 
cows. <laughs> and I don't mean cuts of meat. I mean the whole thing. So when he stays home and doesn't work, he's able to keep more weight on his bones and look healthier. Have you seen me ill? Oh, yeah. But I have not done it. <laughs> so now, knowing that we're going to, you know, this afternoon, Easter, go out and eat, you know, because that's what we like to do sometimes, you know. So, uh, and thinking about food, yum, what would you like to bless people with? <laughs> food? Come on over. We're going. You can, we'll pay if you can find us. <laughs> I just hope each and every one of you are blessed today in, in some small way and that maybe you would perhaps even find just one person to bless yourself. Help them with one small thing or one big thing, which is what each other each of us should do each and every day of our lives. And, um, just remember the true meaning of the resurrection that Jesus died for us and died for our sins. And that today is the day we recognize, even though it may not be the real day, as some would argue, that today He is risen. Indeed. Okay, what's that mean to you about that He's risen? Don't ask those kind of questions. Would I you say, panic. would you say because he's risen, that means you're going to rise too if you die? Yes. So because Jesus died for my sins. So because he rose from the dead, you know that you can rise from the dead. Correct. So is Jesus alive today? Yes. Cool. Where is he? <laughs> Just kidding. You can say in your heart. Huh? You it's inside each and every one of us. True. If you are saved. By his spirit. He's really at the right hand of the Father with me. He sent his spirit so we're kind of like in connection. It's all one, right? Father, Son, Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's all connected. Mm -hmm. Cool. You know you look lovely. Thank you. How do you like my do? Show him the do, not the app. How do you like my do? We had an accident with the uh, Clippers the other day. Go ahead. It's your story. Put the app back up. It's your story. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, I came home from work and goes, honey, look, he turns around and on the back of his head he has three bald spots. The clippers gave out, so then he tried to fix it with his scissors. Well, they got too close with the scissors. So what did I do? He said, honey, will you fix it? So I fixed it in the back with the scissors the best I could, and then the next day when the clippers were charged, we had no choice. See, I'm bald it because off. it's her fault. She balded me. <laughs> oh, he has a new nickname now. I call him Q. Not the cue from Star Trek. No, as in cue ball. There you go. You always have to explain these things. See, that's why I ask you questions to make it understandable. I think they got it without your explanation. Understandable for some people because it goes to all kinds of people from everywhere, different countries, and all oh, over yeah, the world. So, you know, I try to add those you extra know, little pool, insights. Flame pool, cue ball, yeah, white. Exactly. <laughs> so now, what would you like to, knowing that your family? Actually, one member of your family saved. What would you like to ask people to do for your family? Your children. Oh. Your pray grandchildren. For them. Pray your, for them. How many grandchildren do you have? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have steps and I have reels, so it's weird. Wait a minute. Explain this step so that people understand because it's kind of confusing for people that I don't understand. I have three birth children and two stepchildren. Okay, when you say stepchildren, did you call them stepchildren? No. Do they think of you as your mom? Yes, they do. Why do they? Because I helped to raise them. When did they come into your life? And how? When they were little, tiny children by marriage. They were two and seven. By marriage, you mean? You know that other Bible before? I was You mean you were married before, before and that these children... Before didn't want to live with their dad, so they wanted to live with you. Yeah. They now, didn't want to live with their mom. They wanted to live with them. Okay, what about yes. other children? Did you have other children you took in, in your life? Yeah, I have friends of my daughters. And they wanted to live with you? My house was kind of like where all the strays came. The teenagers that weren't getting along with their parents that just needed some time to get away. But didn't you raise some children yourself? I don't mean just teens popping in and out. Uh, not raise. I had one young lady, Becca, who came to live with me for a year when her father had committed suicide. And so different times. She, yeah, she didn't want to move out of state, so she stayed with 
with us. So the children that you talked about being stepchildren, they were just, they treated you as mom. Uh-huh. Okay. And I loved them like they were my own. So now, how many grandchildren do you have? <laughs> so You've had four, a chance to think about it. Five, six, eight. You have eight grandchildren? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Okay. Now, direct children by birth of you. How many children do you have that you gave birth to? Three, two girls and a boy. Cool. What's your names? Michelle, Jennifer, and Frank. Cool. And how many grandchildren do you have by birth children? Two. And what are their names? Colin and Olivia. Great. Now, <laughs> would you like people to pray for your children since they don't know Jesus yet? I would. I would like them to pray for my children that uh, they would one day be saved. Now, what happens when you tell them that you want to talk to them about Jesus? Have you ever had a chance to talk to them about Jesus? All my kids believe in God, but when I try to talk that to them about God or about Jesus, they say, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to go there. Not now, Mom. Leave it alone, Mom. So, with that in mind, where do they live? Two states over in Utah. And they're influenced by Mormon culture. Yes. They're not Mormons. Very heavy Mormon. Their dad was Mormon. But their Mormon culture isn't really part of their lifestyle. No. Okay. So now. It was when they were little kids growing up because of their grandfather. So two, two of them were baptized in the Mormon church. And then by the time Frank was old enough to be baptized, Grandpa had passed away. So he never got baptized. So you would like the people to pray for your children to be saved? Pray that they will find their way and start going to church, to a, a Christian church, and learn how to be saved, to go forward and be saved, or find that one person that can talk to them and get through to them and help them to get saved. Any, any way it can happen. Cool. So now that you've asked them to pray for you, what would you like to pray for them, people that are watching? In other words, how would you like to bless them? She says, I don't know. Good. The Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. I don't know he's No, I'm kidding. Ah. No, I would say, on behalf of my wife and I, you know, we would like to ask God to move in your life so that if you have family members that aren't saved, that you don't feel intimidated and you don't feel like you have to always talk to them about Jesus, but that you will always pray for them, even as my wife prays every morning for her children. And as she is faithful every day to reading her Bible and praying, I ask God that he would move in your family's life, that they would be touched by your prayers as you're faithful to pray for your family members both the near ones and the far ones, the extended family and the close family, the step families and the impartial families, that maybe you just had a chance to see someone that needs prayer. Because really that's what it's all about, Easter, is that for the entire world, we pray that God would save to the uttermost. Because this is the day not that God has made, but that God raised his own son from the dead, that we would have a hope. And the hope would be that Jesus himself would save all of us from our sins and that we would call upon him and that God would accept us because of what his son has done. And because he raised him from the dead, we know that God has accepted his sacrifice. All we need to do is call upon him to be saved. So God bless you. I pray that your Easter is like ours. Eat food, food, food. And that you're not as, you know, wacko as I am, but you're more like my wife, you know, and Really traditional, you know, not contemporary, ah, not sophisticated, ah, not styling, ah, but you know, more conservative. You should see her. <laughs> I like her in a dress. She looks pretty decked out, doesn't she? Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you, honey. You're stuck. Now we're going to record you for about an hour. <laughs>